Hello everyone and happy Friday. Well, today we bring a very interesting topic. We generally don't talk about it and we have not talked about it. Is perimenopause, menopause. This segment of women have been a little bit ignored and we want to bring it a limelight to it. Joining me is Anne. Anne is a noted journalist and she has created an amazing platform to cater to women who are going through menopause and perimenopause called Heart Flashes. And she's also an author. Join, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, I started a platform. I wanted to, uh, it's called Hot Flash Inc. And it's a newsletter and a podcast and all those things because I just thought we needed to focus on some of the research and some of the lifestyle stuff because there's a lot of polarity in the discussion. You know, it's sort of like do it naturally or go HRT. And it seems like there's just a vast space in between that. Yeah. Um, and, and I've seen it. It's, it's beautiful. So let's just focus uh, a little bit on the lifestyle changes that happen to women who start entering in their mid forties. Well, I mean, I think what ends up happening is a lot of women are saying, I didn't know, I didn't even know about perimenopause. I didn't know what was going on. It's not so much you know, it's before you actually even miss a period. It's like maybe your periods change, but you think, you know, oh, I'm still getting my period regularly. So it's not that, but things just can start, can start to go awry for some women. You know, you can have sleep problems. You can have fatigue. You can start getting headaches. There's a range of symptoms you can get. Your periods change. Um, they can be longer or shorter and you can have a lot of mood issues. And a lot of women talk about this time, you know, sort of being at the doctor and asking for help and no one really knows what's going on. And then once, you know, for me, once I missed a period, I was like, oh, okay, okay. I know what's going on. And I think one thing that happens is, you know, you're in your forties and you've lived your life a certain way, usually pretty high high uh, velocity, you know, and then you get in your forties and the things that you did to sort of calm down don't work as well anymore. It doesn't, it, you can't really do like heavy hit workouts. They wear you out. Uh, you just start to get burnt out. And I think that's what ends up happening. Women kind of hit a wall and then they're in perimenopause and they don't, they don't know it. And we're also a little bit of denial, right? Cause menopause still has a stigma. So I know for me, it's like, oh, well anything but that, right? Like anything but that I'd rather have some other thing. <laughs> uh, you, you're absolutely right. And also, I mean, you know, when a woman is going in the mid affects their um, personal relationships, right? Relationship with their spouse, if they're married or with the kids, uh, talk to us a little bit, uh, the transition that happens. And then so someone who has kids, the kids are leaving, right? You know, there's an emptiness syndrome that's happening. And now with all these menopausal symptoms, and kids leaving and, and, and the spouse, that's not, a, it's right? not even that. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, yeah. There's a lot of empty nesters, but women are having kids really a lot later. So a lot of women have kids under 10 at home. They've got aging parents. It's the most demanding times in our career, or, you know, people feel like maybe they're getting aged out of their career, but a lot of people are just really, really working. And, you know, it's also a time if you have a, had a really long-term relationship that maybe you've built up that basement of things you haven't talked about. And you can start to say, is this a relationship I really want? And one of the things, one of the people I've interviewed is Lynette Shepard. She had a website called menopause goddesses and they were in Hawaii. And uh, they got a group of women, there were 15 or 60 of them, 16 of them together, just going through this perimenopause menopause thing. And they all agreed that, you know, you just really shouldn't end your relationship until it's all over. They I only, there was only one divorce out of that group, but there were many discussions about divorce in that group. You know, it's just not a time to do anything rash. I think you're in a major transition. Some people call it an upgrade. And I really like that word. I like to think about it like, um, you know, you, your brain power diminishes, but you're sort of like all parts of our body are completely recalibrating. So just think your body's just constantly like your estrogen's going up and down, your progesterone and testosterone are diminishing and your body's just constantly trying to figure out where to go and what to do. And it's cognitive, it's mood, it's physical. So it's just a really good time to reevaluate um, your lifestyle. Like a lot of, you know, if you've been drinking wine to relax at night, that's probably going to stop working for you, you know, um, food, it's really, really good time to eat whole foods and nourish yourself. And, um, 
it's just a really, really good time to do everything nourishing and restful and things that will energize you. And just to realize that it's, it's temporary. I like to think about it. Like when, you know, if I do a really big cleanup of my kitchen, say, and I pull everything out and then it's chaos and you're sort of like tired, but you know, it's going to be like put all back together. Really, really nice. Because when you see women who've gone through menopause, gosh, they're like, most often I talk to women who've gone through menopause and they're so centered and they're calm and they're energetic and they're happy. Like it, I always say it's really going somewhere good. I think it is. So uh, what do you recommend? Uh, you know, you have a huge following, uh, you know, on Insta and all the work that you're doing. How do women manage this phase of their life? I mean, there's one is the physical part, like we just talked mm -hmm. about the estrogen and the progesterone, and then that physical changes that are happening. That's number one. And due to that, there's a mental part because now you're not as energetic. Sorry, I missed you. You cut out there. Uh, I got oh, so yeah. I, I, I was saying that the physical changes that are happening in women's life mm -hmm. um, translate into the relationships. You know, every, anything that's happening physical is going to translate into mental and your relationships. Uh, how do you? What do you suggest? The tact, even some simple strategies or simple okay. things that women should do to navigate themselves through this a little bit of a turbulent time is what I would call it. Not really turbulent like a rocky but still a little bit of a bumpy time, I would say. Yeah. For some women, it's nothing, you know, there's 10 or 15% of women who don't have anything, but I think that there is a soul shift going on. Cause a lot of us have been caring for other people. Maybe we haven't really listened to our own true selves. So first of all, acknowledging that you might go through some growth and change and start really becoming the person that you were always meant to be. And that maybe you haven't been, but um, I think it takes like a pretty big, approach. So just saying, is my nutrition as good as it can be? What things can I fix? Um, reassessing the role of alcohol, uh, move, changing movement. You know, I used to just kill myself in the gym and do hard Bikram yoga classes. And now I do a lot of walking and I shifted to strength training because that's really good for preventing osteoporosis. Um, it's a good time to have sleep hygiene, you know, make sure you're not looking at that phone. Think about supplementing with magnesium, we can all use that. And most of the experts I talk to recommend it. Um, this is a, also a time and people, people don't talk about this, but there has been research that adverse childhood experiences or trauma not dealt with. And this doesn't mean you need to go to therapy. It just means you need to do a little bit of work to figure out what might be dogging you, you know, what, what you might've been ignoring and doing a little bit of work because there is research that adverse childhood experiences undealt with can worsen and, you know, sort of ex exacerbate perimenopause and menopause. So taking some time to um, work through those things can really ease up a lot of um, things that are happening in your mind. You know, uh, it's, it's, we've all know that feeling of when you just ignore and deny something, it always comes out. It always comes out. So um, I say definitely the lifestyle and, you know, it, experts are all over the place sort of on hormone therapy, we're, we're fairly certain that hormone therapy is safe, but some doctors you'll still go to, and they don't really want to give it to you until you've gone through menopause, which is one year without your period. So, um, if you're adamant and you really feel like you need it, then, you know, you can find a doctor. It shouldn't be too hard. Doctors don't know a lot about hormone therapy. So I really recommend people do their own research, but I think it is safe. And if you're someone who doesn't want to go that route or, you know, that it doesn't always work for everyone either. So, definitely cleaning up the lifestyle aspect. And I love this naturopathic doctor, Lara Bryden. She has sort of a rescue remedy where she says daily walks. And I say, I would add to that in the morning with the morning light. Uh, she says magnesium and taurine, magnesium powder and taurine at night and cutting out alcohol. And she has said in her patients that helps them about 50% of them with the sleep and the night sweats and the problem that they have like hot flashes and night sweats are a problem for a lot of women, but there's, um, you know, if you start tracking, you can see that sometimes they're triggered by things. Like I, I've certainly talked to women who say they're triggered by stress. I know they'll be triggered from you by alcohol. Other people say coffee, other people say, you know, there's all sorts of things that can trigger them. So, um, that's also something to pay attention to, but it's also just knowing that there are so many symptoms that can happen and that you're just going to ride it out. Usually it's like a sort of a roller coaster, right? Like 
I found that nothing lasts too, too long. Like I've had, an, I've had an itchy face for a couple of months like this, but I, <laughs> that's just a, oh, and there's lots of women on TikTok talking about itchy ears, you know, and you wouldn't put that two and two together. There's like, just knowing that there's so many symptoms, like say a uh, dentist will say that women have a lot of gum problems, sore, inflamed gums, bleeding gums. You wouldn't, you wouldn't connect that normally, you know, um, physiotherapists will say they see a lot of frozen shoulder and we know there's a lot of joint pain and that kind of thing. So also watching sugar consumption, because that really can make, uh, physical body pain worse. And I was going to add, um, to add, this is a support, like a peer support, women to women support for, with each other yeah. can also help, right? The work that you are doing is is uh, enabling or empowering women to uh, have the support. Do you want to talk a little bit about the support part? Yeah, well, I mean, look, it's a very weird time. And if you're having symptoms and you don't know what they are and you're, you know, we've all seen the headlines. I'm a journalist. I've seen so many worst case scenarios, you know, like the person who had the one symptom and then ended up dying of whatever, whatever. So I, I think I'm not unlike a lot of women though, where I'll just be walking around thinking, am I dying of this? Like, is there something in my head? Am I going to die? And I think a lot of us are walking around like secretly really worried about our health and you can't go run like, yes, we should get things checked out. We should definitely get things checked out if they're new and they're different and they're pronounced but you can't go running to the doctor every five minutes, you know, like you, it's just not practical. And so that's why it's good to have, um, friends that you can speak to and just honestly be like, okay, I've got this, like, what, what like, do you think this is anything, you know, and a lot of friend groups, they don't talk about it yet because it's still sort of, there is still stigma and people, people don't want to admit they're going through it. So I'd say if your friends, and by the way, my friends, they talk about it now. Cause I've been talking about nothing, but for a couple of years, but they weren't really talking about it either. And even when I started talking about it, so I have found a lot of solace, like in the hot flash Inc community, there's loads of group on fa groups on Facebook. Um, there's funny videos on TikTok. anything that can make you feel like, okay, you know, like I'm not, I'm not going crazy. Cause I think that's what a lot of us worry that we are <laughs> sometimes. No, I think uh, you're absolutely right. People, uh, a lot of women don't want to talk about it because for some reason, and, yes. and like in pregnancy, you know, when, when women are pregnant, they love to talk about it. You know, it's something to be proud of. And for some yeah. reason, when women are hitting this phase, I don't know what it is. Uh, then maybe they're not proud of, and maybe they're a little bit scared, um, you know, just apprehensive. Oh, now I'm going to get old, you know, the, the, the changes, the physical changes, and also your hair thinning sometimes, your skin, uh, all those things, and, and the fear of, osteoporosis, dementia, relationships. I mean, there's, a, there's an unknown ch chartered, unknown territory that you're entering and you have no idea. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But I will say once you talk about it, I mean, I think everything in my experience in life, everything is so much better when you just face it head on. You know, like I, I just had a silly banking issue that I was like avoiding for three weeks and it was making me uncomfortable. And then I went and sorted it out and it's fine. It's so much better now, right? Like, it's never as bad as you think. And when you talk, I mean, I thought, um, well, I'm single too. So when I started, I'm like, well, this will be the nail in the coffin. I'm never going to be, a, you know, have a relationship. And I'm talking about menopause all the time. That's going to be a complete like turnoff. And that's not true either. No one I've, I've dated several people since I started this and every guy's just been like, Oh really? Like, you know, they're our age too, you know, like they're not. And if anyone would be a jerk about it, I think that's, it's their problem. So I think I would encourage people to talk about it. It's really freeing. It's not like you have to be in a business meeting and like yell about menopause, but it's like, bring it up and you will find people are like relieved and, and excited to hear about it and talk about it. I, I did want to mention that we women go through menopause, but I was researching yesterday, men have their version of menopause called menopause, you know, right? Um, so so they're also going through their their, their They also don't have as much energy. It's not just yep. the women, and but nobody talks about it because guys don't want to talk about, right? You know, oh. that they're uh, they're having problems. Yes, I want. I really want to do actually more on this. I have friends who are like, "Don't do men." You know, people are like anti men these days. They're like, "No, men get all the attention." I'm like. They do and they don't, you know, because we still can't really talk about men's mental health very openly. 
and men do go through andropause. And I think all of us might be having a harder time. There's a theory that there's sort of an evolutionary mismatch where we just, you know, so many things are coming at us that we're just like sort of less, less equipped to handle it. That's one theory, but it's happening to men too. It's called andropause. It happens at a much slower pace. Their testosterone diminishes. They can have hot flashes too. And um, they can have lots of problems. And I don't know whether you've been hearing the term low T. That's a really, that's a term I've been hearing lately a lot. And there's men going on hormone therapy. And so it's something for both people to pay attention to. Like, it's no longer this like, oh, my wife's going through menopause. She's going to grow a mustache and I'm just going to be like the same awesome person, you know, like hormonal issues are striking all of us. So um, yeah, I'd like to do a lot more about that with men because they think it's poorly understood. And I know men in their, uh, several men in their forties who struggle, who are struggling, struggling with moods, struggling with adverse childhood experiences, struggling with, um, you know, feeling good gut issues, gut issues are a huge, huge, huge thing. And I would say maybe the first thing to look at, because I think if your gut is not, you know, a lot of us have the food, the food we eat isn't great. It's all been sort of sprayed with glyphosate, like all the crops, like there was a lot of things going on in our guts. And I think if people could focus on their gut and getting their gut in a good shape, I think you're going to be a lot better when it comes to your menopause and perimenopause symptoms. I know I had a gut issue and the, you know, the symptoms are very similar to perimenopause, like brain fog and bloating. Bloating is a big perimenopause one. But once I, I sorted the gut issue out, I've been a lot, I've been a lot better. And that goes for men too. Okay. Well, I think this is great. Um, you know, we, uh, I, I really love the way you said that the men and the women, both of them are going through this uh, changes or physical changes as well as mental changes. And, yeah. and we should talk about it openly when we, you know, deal with anything head on, it's almost easier and better. And, you know, you feel lighter and we don't talk yeah. about it in our society. And to your point, just, just, we'll just be more open about it. We talk about puberty all the time. You'll see like a kid and it's like, oh, she's almost, you know, and he's going through puberty and it's like nothing. It's like, I don't know why. And, you know, animals go through this too. People always say it's only whales. It's not only whales. It's, it's just that they haven't, I'm, I'm convinced it's that they haven't studied animals closely enough. They, I've read a study that giraffes go through it, several kinds of whales. I read a story of, of a veterinarian in, um, the UK who said dogs go through it, it's just often that they're fixed, but even when they're fixed, they'll still go through it. And I think if they start studying long living um, turtles, parrots, I think you might start seeing like, you know, many animals going through it. I think we're just on the cusp of knowing and finding out so much more about it because women's health is really under-researched. And I'm just so excited to find out whether my cat's going to go through menopause. And I'm excited to find out what role um, testosterone and DHEA are going to play. There are so many things to find out. Um, and a lot of, there's a, you know, there's quite a lot of links being drawn between cardiovascular disease, dementia, and osteoporosis is definitely, it tied up with menopause, but it's sometimes in the discussion online, it makes it seem like menopause causes those things. Sorry, my cat's getting in on the conversation. Um, Menopause, I don't know that menopause causes any of those things. It can put us at a greater risk due to this recalibration I was talking about. Um, but it's an important thing to pay attention to because we are at a risk for dementia um, more than men. And cardiovascular disease is something that is uh, uh, can be a killer for us too. Yeah, and I don't think it's time. a switch. No? Sorry? Uh, no, I was just saying that it's not just a switch. Like let's say a woman is... Uh, period stops coming at age 50, whatever, 52. Yeah. And it's not a switch that the day your period is gone, now suddenly you're going to have a dementia issues or a cardiovascular. No. It, I think it stems from before as well, how well you have taken care of yourself in your early 20s, 30s, or even 40s. Yeah. And then that can translate into some kind of a problem that we are talking about today. Yeah. And they're working that, you know, we're going to see more and more of this moving forward. But you know, this is a time of life. I think, you know, here's one link that this is a time of life where we're much more uh, susceptible to becoming in insulin resistant and insulin resistance, is like the, you know, the precursor to uh, type two diabetes, which is a terrible risk factor for all sorts of disease, including cardiovascular disease. I don't know that people always connect the dots. It's not just that it's menopause and this, 
And dementia, well, there are many, 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 many factors that go into dementia. The conversation in the media seems to have honed in on estrogen. And I've even seen articles that say, is menopause the reason for dementia? No, there's a ton of, there's a ton of reasons. Um, and there's a ton of things that you can do. Exercise being like one of the number one things, keeping yourself busy and challenged, having good relationships. There are so many things, nutrition, all of it, sugar, um, but yeah, like estrogen is, you know, it is something that can, people are talking about as have, being very protective for the brain. It's a, it's very confusing, but I, I really bristle when people make it seem like menopause is some sort of disease. Like it's very natural. It's the other side of puberty. It can be tricky. We might need help, but it's, you know, they've done studies that when you think about it in a really negative way, it can actually make it worse. And we know that in our lives and we dread something as opposed to approaching it with like a state of curiosity and it makes a difference of how the experience ends up unfolding, I think. Well, this is a quick, uh, I think this is great, bringing it out, talking about it. We bring these sessions on a daily basis and we're gonna start focusing more on the uh, women who are 40 plus, and we're also going to include men. So anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up today, this is a quick 10, 15 minute session that we bring on a daily basis, just to have awareness of each topic. It's amazing. Well, I just think it's important to trust yourself. What I see a lot on social media is people just like picking an expert and just like, go. we all want a quick fix, right? We all want to say, I want to take this and be done with it. And I just don't know that this is one situation in our life that we should necessarily do that. I think it's a time to like, just be thoughtful. Listen, you know, if you're going to be on social media, listen to a range of people use your common sense. We've been all around for a long time. We have a lot of wisdom. We, this is a time when we figure out what is best for us and we don't need to decide tomorrow what to do. For example, I'm thinking about hormone therapy, but I'm really thinking about it. I'm really, you know, to me, it, I know it's good for you and it's safe, but to me to go on something that I have to get every month and take every day, like, you know, these are, these are important things to me to consider. I don't do any of that lightly. So, and I know what I feel in my heart and I'm trying to be much more in tune to my intuition. And that's something that is a great thing about this time of life. So I would just, I would advise that, like, take your time, choose your experts wisely. If you're on social media to stay away from that, people shouting at you to do one thing or another, because we don't need any of that. <laughs> and don't suffer in silence. Right? No, talk to yes. people. Talk, yeah. Talk to people and, and, you know, find a doctor that, that knows about menopause. I think it's, I think one recommendation I heard is if you, it's hard for some people to find a doctor, for example, in Canada, it's like impossible, but it, even if you're just, who's the menopause expert there, who knows about menopause. And if they don't know, then you have to learn about it yourself. And that's okay. I've got lots of information. You can print out studies and say, what about this? Leave it with the doctor, let them think about it. You got to take charge. This is our time to be responsible for everything and everything will be better if we do that. I think. Well, thank you so much, Anne, for being with us. I think this is a topic that needs more discussion, that needs openness, and, and then it needs to come out in the sense that we should be talking about it the way we talk about puberty, the pregnancy, yep. you know, so many other things. And we don't talk about this as a society all over the world. And yep. an interesting fact is that there are going to be one billion women who will be uh, perimenopausal and menopausal all over the world, one billion. And then that's yep. a lot of women out there, you know, who want to talk about it, but nobody wants to talk about that. More than ever before. That's a tipping point. And that's why everything's changing. I think everyone's paying attention to it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Anne, for joining me. Thank you. Yes, everyone else keeps supporting us. We are coming up with a lot of programs and workshops for, specifically for women in this age. Supporting us with that. Thank you so much.